as if I pushed a button with those words, but I suddenly lunge forward and grabs my wrist. His eyes are flaring as he looks at me. Don't just joke around with this. I freeze on the spot. It's not like I can easily move away in any way, since he's putting a lot of strength into his hold on my wrist. Do you think it wouldn't matter if you had been killed because I just let things be? It's not a joke when people die. He's so serious, it is almost scary. And at the same time, I'm a little confused. I never thought he would make such a big thing out of what I did. I believed his pride had been hurt by what I said to him that day, but the severity of the situation had surprised him, and yet, in his words nine, I sensed something else. I can't let you die. What are you saying? His dark eyes are staring directly into mine. In them I see both conflicting feelings and burning determination at the same time, and it makes my heart stand still for a moment. He finally cools down a little and lets go of me before jumping down from the trunk. Trunk. You said it's over, but you don't really believe it, do you? No. Alright then. I will fight this time, I want it down. I want to try to throw life away one more time. Tobias. He turns around and faces me once again, surrounded by the phosphorus green light of the fireflies. Maybe it's the place and the lighting, or maybe the way I see him just changed. But somehow, he seems like a completely different person than the usual one. He watches me with determination. I nod slowly. Yeah, don't worry. I won't abandon this place to its fate. I get on my feet and stand before him with a resolution of my own. Of my own. I won't leave. Not until I feel certain that it is safe. I will fight with you. The vast watches me silently and then he just nods as well. The forest is silent. Somewhere below the festival is going and the inhabitants of that little town are dancing and having fun. But up here, there are only two, the two of us, as if we have been isolated in our own little world. A precious place, with a precious promise. There's no longer a doubt about what I need to do. Day 12 They're just tired, but uplifted atmosphere in town. People happily greet each other in the street, <clears throat> thanking for the good company the day before, while still cleaning up the last bits and pieces from the festival. The positive in there even affects me a little, making me sound this scenery, and my dark folks are pushed back for a bit. Main Street. <sighs> Good morning. Something the matter? Oh, morning, Lina. Have you seen any of the boys around? I swear they are all hiding from me. Hiding? They have to help with cleaning up after yesterday too. I can't believe the nerve of them. Even Simon left already, saying he had something important to do. <sighs> Eric keeps grumbling while looking around and hoping to support someone, I can't help but smile at her a little. So dutiful, as always. I'll try and help you the best you can. I can. What? And help you the best you can if you need it. The best yeah, I can. But I think that should be like that. Really? That would be great. We still need to wash a lot of dishes from yesterday. Do some restocking. Sweep the front. Fix some chairs. Erin happily keeps listening one thing after another. Gavin, Tobias, and Simon. How dare you leave me alone with this? Tobias passes by on the street. He has noticed me, but I quickly catch up with him. Tobias? Uh. What? Are we headed into the mountains? Yeah. How is the search coming along? Not well. I still have found anything while trying to search the crevice by the heart. It's not an easy place to search, but still. He hesitates for a moment as if there is something more he wants to say. There's something strange going on. Strange? How so? My suppressed anxiety reacts to this statement, 
making my heart beat a little faster. I don't know how to put it, but it's like things are changing up there. There's something different about the place, and it gets worse every time I go there. But I I can't put my finger on it. I look up at the mountain towering above the village. I want to go up there with you today, to see things for myself. He watches me silent for a moment, and I half expect him to brush me off as usual, but then he nods. Alright, actually there was something I want to ask you too. Oh? I was looking for Oran. I haven't seen him since we fought the soldiers, but he has to know something about this. But no matter where I look, I see no sign of him. Aran disappeared? The tiny snake of brooding anxiety wiggles inside me once more. I was thinking that maybe you could find him. I can try at least. Good, then let's go. Tobias sets off and I follow him onto the path leading into mountains. The surroundings seems dislighted and unfriendly in the fading sunlight, a cold and unwelcoming territory. I look around me as we ascend the mountain trail. The silence continues. The further we leave the town behind, the more dead the place seems. This isn't how this place is supposed to be. I know that instinctively, something is definitely wrong. You're right. This place is changing. Aaron can be pleased with things turning out like this. He's usually hard to find, but I really want to talk to him about this development. He must know what is going on. I stop and concentrate on my surroundings. Tobias stops too and then just watch and just watches me as I close my eyes and search. Aaron, where are you? In this sea of disturbed, tense energy, I try to locate the familiar feeling of the spirit's presence, like a warm, brownish red. Still nothing. Annoyed, I lean up against the cliff beside me and concentrate harder. Even a trace of his presence will do as it can at least tell me what direction to go. Only this oppre oppressive, swirling flow of irregularity surrounds me and almost makes me a little sick. Then I notice it. It is incredibly weak, but it is definitely him. Is he far away? I think I found trace of arm. What direction? I am about to open my mouth and answer when suddenly I notice something strange. I open my eyes. There she is. About 5 meters away is the figure of a young girl. Her hair is hanging loose and her skin is pale but her eyes are very much alive. Adele. You... You are back? At first she sounds almost disinterested as she speaks in a tired voice. But anger is slowly throwing up inside her as she watches us. Back to finish the job? Adele, you're alive. What happened to you? I ask carefully, slowly reaching out of my senses. I can tell that something is horribly wrong with the girl in front of me. Like her spirit self has been distorted into something different, something unstable. What happened to me? Her voice grows ice cold and her eyes pierce through me. You actually dare ask me that question? I tighten the grip on my sword as the pitch of her voice rises in anger. I can feel it come to life and twirl around inside her. You killed me, Lina! That is what happened! An ominous wind blows against my face and the tension in the air rises. Stop this, Adele! You don't have to do this! I'm surprised myself at these words. I shouldn't be talking to her at all. Instead, I should be focusing on my next chance for attack. The sooner, the better. And yet I can't help but want to stop her if possible. That day, I just don't want to have to do that again. Are you really stupid enough to believe that? She leans back at me without restraint. The air around her vibrates with her anger. You really believe that I have a choice? A choice for what? Look at me, I can't go home. I can't I can never go back. Her voice grows desperate. Huh, maybe that rock somehow influenced her. Even from distance I can see the dark purple grow in her eyes, which makes her look so different from before. There is nothing for me. If I go with you, I die. If I go home, I die. Her words straight off, but then she laughs. I have nothing yet, everything. And with it, it, I will make you pay. I will make this nightmare yours. Alam away her outburst to buy quickly red eyes, reduce his bow. But before he can fire it, Adele another shadow speeds towards him and the blade of a sword only barely misses his neck as he instinctively pulls back from this attacker. The newcomer charges forward again and as she leaves the shadows, I recognize her face. 
is a female soldier I fought a few days ago. What is this? She was supposed to be dead, just like Adele. I'm sure of it. There's no way she should be able to move like this. And next, Aka comes too fast for the bus to be able to get a clear shot at the soldier, so he has to throw the bow aside instead and quickly draws the short sword at his side. The sound of clashing steel resounds in the air as he only just manages to ward off her strike. Hold on. I charge for her to help him, disregarding Adele for now. I launch out, but she manages to judge it. As she sees me charging towards her, there is a brief look of shock on her face, and she quickly leaps back even further to avoid my attack. Is she afraid of me? Then she blinks and her face returns to the same old mask of, indi of indifference. Her lips move for a short moment, but I can't hear what she's saying. What the hell? I thought you said you had killed this dude. I, I did. I'm not sure about Adele, but this is one definitely isn't human anymore. What? There is no time to pass as the, f as the fight continues on. I block the hole, the, the attack and am about to go on the offensive again when Adele decides to move as well. No, I want you for myself. The short blade is drawn in her hand and she readies herself to join the fray. Fighting them both at the same time could be a problem. This soldier alone already moves surprising fast for someone who is supposed to be dead. Taking advantage of the slight distraction, she lunges forward again, and I'm pushed down as I had to pair the blow in an awkward position. Tobias sees it too and quickly jumps to the side, recovering his bow as he rolls past and sits up ready to fire. There's only a moment's hesitation before he raises the arrow. Surprised, Adele jerks back and the arrow whistles past her shoulder. No, this is perfect. Taking advantage of Adele's slowdown, I charge upwards, directly towards the soldier. Surprised, she steps back and manages to brush my sword aside, but now she's completely open. I continue my charge forwards and ram into her with my shoulder, shoving her back. She flies her arms for a second, as she realizes that there is nothing to step on behind her, and then falls backwards, tumbling down the rocky slope. That should hold her off for a moment. She's running away! Adele sees that things aren't exactly favorable for her and turns around to run. I had to stop her. Kicking off the ground, I set off on the pursuit. Wait! There is no second lose. Adele came back. Won't this ever end? She hasn't come far. Even if she left the path, I should be able to catch up with her fast. Scaling the cliffs with a few powerful leaps, I can tell I'm already closing in on her. But then something strange suddenly happens. Out of the corner of my eyes, I see something comes peering towards me, quickly putting in the brakes and twisting ground. I try to ward it off my sword, but I only manage to throw with its cares by a little. The rocks shatters and ramps to my right shoulder, pushing me back. Sharp pain shoots through my shoulder, and I almost drop my sword as I fall to my knee from the impact. Where did that come from? I look around me in bewilderment. It definitely wasn't thrown by Adele. She must have some more tricks up her sleeve. Damn it. Phoenix slowly turns to my arm and it doesn't look like it was severely hurt. I go back to my field to resume the chase while concentrating in an attempt to sense her presence. I can feel a faint trace of her distorted aura in the air and set off a head further upwards, zigzagging through the rough terrain. It's getting stronger. The resorted tension in the air suddenly grows in strength. Soon I can feel it even without really trying, and I get a bad premonition. Another ridge of cliffs is above me. The air is heavy, something is on the other side. Carefully I climb the cliffs and leap down on the other side. I find myself in what will be familiar surroundings. It is the small valley of cliffs, a natural bowl in the side of the mountain, with the great hard place at the far end. But in the air here is different. It is like what I felt flowing from Adele, just much stronger. Destroy. That's right, I destroyed the heart that day. When Adele attacked me using its powers, I struck the cliff and knocked off a large piece of stone. There is a hole in the heart now. A few pieces are still spread on the ground beneath it. Beneath it. But that is not all. The stone is no longer emitting a faint blue light. It is now surrounded by a swirling, sick-looking dark purple glow. The dark and light twists around and bears, as if it is if to our angry self. Adele isn't here. I was led astray by the aura of the stone and lost her trial, but I can't help standing there, staring at the stone. I have a creeping feeling 
of why the mountain felt so cold and empty on my way up here. I have never heard of something like this happening before. Ara. Tobias is right, we have to ask him what this means. The pressure in the air is giving me a headache. Lina. Tobias appears around the corner, hurrying into the veil. He too stares into belief as he sees the current state of the heart. What is this? We have to go back and warn the others. Tobias then stares for a moment, staring at the broken heart with a dark expression. Then he nods and we turn around to leave for the village. 